What's up, everybody? Welcome to episode two of Rebuilding the New York Giants. We had an exciting free agency, a good close to the first season. So for those that are wondering, we do have the fourth pick in the draft, and we didn't actually get every one of those free agents that we went after. We just got a good chunk. So we have filled out this roster a good bit now. Uh, we still have a lot of holes, though, and this draft is going to be fun. We got a bunch of picks. We got a first, a second, a third, actually two seconds because we traded away, away Olivier Vernon. And then we have two fourths, two fifths from the uh, Snacks Harrison trade, a sixth and a seventh. And I believe this fourth pick is what we had in the Raiders series. It's unfortunate because we are unlikely to get uh, either Ed Oliver or Nick Bosa, which would be just fantastic. But things could play out differently. The 49ers end up with the first pick. The Jags completely fell apart, get the second pick. The cards picking third, and then us picking fourth. So who knows? Maybe Jacksonville goes quarterback. We might think about trading down, honestly, but I don't think we have the assets to trade up. I'm not willing to part with our first rounder from next season because there's good quarterbacks next year that we really don't want to miss out on if Teddy Bridgewater is not the answer. So for that reason, I think we have to just keep our fingers crossed. Worst case, we can get a tackle. So the first overall pick is Ed Oliver to the San Francisco 49ers. Great pick for them. The second pick, I would think, is going to be Nick Bosa to the Jaguars. But maybe, just maybe, they will go with a quarterback here. They take Greg Little, the left tackle. So Nick Bosa is sitting there a pick above us. Man, what would we have to give the Arizona Cardinals to get a game-breaking player like Nick Bosa into this organization at a position of need? Could we give them our first and second? Do they even think about this? Let's see. They are actually pretty close on that. I mean, is this worth it? I really do think it is. We don't have to give up that much we could give a future second it's a lot to give up we have a lot of holes but we're probably never going to have a chance at a player like this and i know some of you are thinking about just take justin herbert trade down collect more assets oh the options on the table or we just risk it that he falls to us man this is tough i I don't like doing this. It's it's too many picks to give up. We're not a player away. This roster has too much work to be done. I don't think we're in a position to do that as tempting as it is. They're going to take Bosa and have an extraordinary pass rush, but oh, they take a receiver. Ooh, we just we just lucked out big time. So Nick Bosa falls to us at number 4. What a steal. And we might have to change our scheme because he really is better suited to be like his brother, more of a down edge rusher. But that is not a problem. We can morph our scheme around a franchise player like Nick Bosa. What a pick. I did not see that coming. So let's see what the rest of uh, these teams go with, considering this is uh, kind of a realistic standing of a mock draft situation so the Jets taking a linebacker there Rashawn Gary to the Raiders the Falcons get a D tackle that they need Greedy Williams the Titans taking Trey Lamar the linebacker the tackle to the Vikings good pick for them a center to the Bills tackle to the Browns so the linemen flying off the board the, the Bucks taking an edge rusher a good pick for them Broncos D tackle Zach Allen to the Dolphins, Packers get an edge rusher, Montez Sweat, corner to the Panthers, and then DJ Metcalf, DK Metcalf, to the Raiders, linebacker to the Panthers. Panthers ended up with a bunch of first round picks here, they must be trading up. Michael Dieter to the Ravens, Joe Jackson, Jalen Jokes to the Eagles, another pass rusher, Bryce Love to the Colts, that's a common one, I, I like that pick though. The Stanford, Andrew Luck, uniting together. Dexter Lawrence to the Chargers. Noah Fant to the Seahawks, could see that. And the Patriots, just doing Patriots things. They snipe Justin Herbert 
at the end of the first round. Caleb Wilson to the Rams. Pass rusher to the Chiefs. Corner to the Texans. D-tackle for the Packers. And the Raiders get Carl Granderson. Really good draft for the Raiders. 49ers are going to take a tackle here. And the Jags passing on a quarterback twice, which does put us in a spot where we could think about a quarterback here in the second round. But let's see. There's a lot of talented players left on the board. So at offensive line, we did do a pretty good job shoring this thing up. We obviously are going to want to draft some players on the line, but the value isn't quite there in my opinion. Most of the guys left, I would say, maybe in the third round if, if they are available. Drew Locke is a pretty special prospect to get right here, but I'm more in favor of getting better talent on the defensive side of the ball. I think a athletic linebacker out of USC Cameron Smith in this situation to be kind of that field general for us, a, a Leighton Vander Esch type of prospect here. We've seen him have success in Dallas. So we're going to go with Cameron Smith, a stud middle linebacker here. 84 speed, 88 acceleration. So we're shoring up the front end of this defense with some really good athletes. And now we're going to skip ahead to our next pick. So at 19, let's see what the players available are. And, and sure enough, the quarterback is still there. We could certainly think about that. I think with the rest of the best value in this class, I would have loved to get Lucas Dennis if that would, would have been possible, but he's gone. So I think we got to go with Drew Locke. A lot of people are going to want Will Greer, I know. But we've got Teddy Bridgewater in the building as that lower floor quarterback. I think we go Drew Locke, former five-star prospect, has all of the tools in the world, has all of the upside to be a future franchise quarterback for us. So let's go to our next pick. Fourth pick in the third round. I am thinking about cornerback here, cornerback or offensive lineman. Kendall Sheffield, just a freak. I feel like I end up with him in almost every class. I'm not sure the value's there at corner right now, though. I think we should probably go with a lineman. And I am trying to mix things up, take some different players than I've taken in the past, try to not just automatically take uh, all of the, the gems. Obviously, I'm pretty familiar with who's good in this class in terms of their development traits. I think Lester Cotton here, get an Alabama big mauler. Never taken this player. But 70 overall, just the normal development but definitely gives us a guard that can play. Let's go on to our next pick. Fourth round. Let's look at cornerback now. And Sheffield's still available, who we were thinking about back in that last round. Got to work on the zone coverage, but a freak athlete, six feet tall. We're going to go with Sheffield here. And I end up with him a lot, but for the first time, I might actually start him. So let's go to our next pick. Another fourth round pick. I'm tempted to take Isaiah Simmons, who we know has star development, but I feel like that's a little cheap to just grab another star automatically here. Also, I'd be looking for more of that free safety type to pair next to Landon Collins, who I prefer in the box. I'm going to take Terry Godwin here, add to our receiver depth a little bit. Just a versatile receiver, can do a lot of nice things out of Georgia. And then now in the fifth round, let's go ahead and grab another corner. Lavert Hill, 20 years old, little smaller, but a nice player out of Michigan, adding to that depth in the secondary. Gonna have some nice competition at corner. And then we're gonna follow it up with another Michigan Wolverine, Karan Higdon. I don't usually take running backs out of my class, but this will be fun. He's a tough MF, and he can move too, and he'll be a good backup for us because we didn't actually get Raheem Mostert. Now I'd like to take a safety. Dakota Dixon is still available, so I think we got to go with him. We're, we're looking for that more center fielding type, which is definitely him. Seventh round, I'm going to take another uh, safety here, J.R. Reed. 
similar player to Dakota Dixon. And that's, oh, that's not it. We got one more pick. What do we do with this pick? I'm going to go with Jalen Young out of FAU. Athletic guy. Another safety just to add depth to that position. He might even be better than the other guys we just took. So that's a good class. I feel like we did a really good job setting up the future here. Nick Bosa highlighting everything there. Did not expect to get him. I don't think Giants fans expected that either. So some stud defenders. We get a potential quarterback of the future. We're going to start with Teddy and see what happens with Drew Locke. We get a guard who probably won't start, but will be a very good backup. We get a couple really athletic corners. We get a good depth at wide receiver who might be our third best wide receiver right away. And then Karan Higdon, a good backup running back. And three safeties to compete as we're looking to fill out that free safety position that is really up for grabs right now. So we do have some changes to make. You know, it's not very normal to completely morph a scheme around one player, but when you are so <laughs> lacking talent like we are, it is much more realistic to say we are going to build the future of this defense around a specific player. So we're going to kind of run the Zimmer scheme. We got the, I know he's an offensive guy, but we kind of got the Pat Shermer connection there. Uh, so we're going to go with a more aggressive 4-3 style, a little more man-to-man, -man, a little more blitzing. So that means we got to reshape our roster here. That makes things a little interesting because we did re-sign these guys to be kind of that 3-4 defensive end style, but it's not like we paid them so much. You know, We'd much rather put our new star pass rusher in a position to su succeed. And some of these guys can play you know, that 3-4 end. Kerry Hyder is a bit of a lost cause. Probably just let him go. But Roy Robertson-Harris, he can actually play... Uh, D end on first, second down, be a good run defender for us. It's definitely a better fit for Kareem Martin if we were to use him. So we're going to push Ogletree out to outside linebacker. Goodson out as well. All right, so now for training, I think I want to focus on quarterback and offensive line, the two biggest investments we made here. And then probably D-line and linebacker now that those were kind of our top picks this year. So I won't bore you guys with the training here. We'll skip ahead through this. All right, so I skipped ahead here to week four of the preseason. We got two cuts, and we definitely don't need four quarterbacks. I'm going to go ahead and practice squad Kyle Laletta. I actually didn't know Laletta had quick development, but that's all right. I am not really interested in him at the moment. And I'm probably going to go ahead and make more cuts than necessary because we need to upgrade this wide receiver here. There's probably other positions we need to upgrade. So let's take a look at that in the process. We'll run through our roster here. So yeah, wide receiver, we definitely need some bodies. Tight ends, we need some bodies. O-line, we need a body or two. And I realized that we should have done this before the preseason, but it is what it is. You'll have to forgive me. We could use another D-tackle after the scheme switch. Linebacker, we got plenty of guys here. We should probably just let some of these guys go, actually. We got plenty of safeties. We'll let Sean Chandler go, or we'll just practice squad him, I suppose. Michael Thomas, we'll, we'll hold on to you for now. You've been a good giant. So let's see where we might be able to improve here. I'm going to just wait till the cuts of everyone's team is done, and then we'll make those signings. So let's go to week one, where we're going to play the Eagles in week one. I am excited to use this team, man. I feel like we had a really good first offseason. For our focus players, we're doing Hernandez again, Nick Bosa, and Cameron Smith, kind of three integral parts of our future here. So let's do our upgrades here before we play this game. Nick Bosa already getting one. A speed rusher for Dalvin Tomlinson. What else would you do? Ooh. Beast. Bill Hernandez.
Kerry Hyder doesn't really fit our new system here, so we're gonna let him go. And I'm just gonna upgrade actually at the other outside linebacker position, get Stefan Anthony and release Woodson Looster. Okay, so we are gonna play offense. Or maybe we should play defense because we are we've got these exciting new defensive players. I think we should do that. Let's see if Teddy Bridgewater can play well in the simulation, and if not, we might play offense with Drew Locke down the stretch. So the new era begins, the Eli Manning is era is over, but it doesn't start easy in Philadelphia. Offense do off the actually we're gonna start on defense and take that back. And I just noticed I didn't set my depth chart because I'm an idiot. We should be pretty good actually. I just need to change up these cornerbacks because I am gonna start Lavert Hill in the slot. Sam Beal and Sheffield are gonna be our main guys, and then Grant Haley is going to be our fourth. Robert's going to play kind of a special teams role to start. And then I kind of like Jalen Young. I think I'm going to play Jalen Young at free safety over Dakota Dixon for now. So we were pretty zone-oriented with the Raiders. We're going to be more man with this team, just mix it up a little bit. But also I, I like that fit when we got a better pass rush in there with Bosa. Allows you to kind of pin your ears back a little more, trust your pass rush to get there before your coverage breaks down. Jeez. Big runs on the first two carries. Ooh, there you go. Lorenzo Carter getting in there. It is going to be a little harder to be man-oriented early on, though, when our corners are pretty bad. Ooh, there you go. Sutton Smith. Way to light him up. So on pass rushdowns, we're going to take BJ Hill out. We're going to put Bosa on the inside. And go with Gregory. Make a tackle or just let him run out of bounds. That works too. <laughs> All right, the offense scores. Oh! Oh, we gotta recover that. I think that was Sheffield that ripped that thing out though. You gotta remember, we also have Roy Robertson Harris who can start on the edge, not necessarily start, but play first down on the edge instead of maybe Carter who's not quite as good in, in run defense. Oh, shoot. Get there, Young. Dang, they got Mark Ingram and Jay Ajayi. Ingram just roasted whoever that was over there. Like, this would probably have been a good time to put Robertson Harris in there. And I might actually change that in the depth chart so that he's starting in base. Jeez, there's those slants. They always get us when we run zone. Get him down. Jeez. <laughs> this is a challenge. A lot of young players on this defense. Let him up. Oh, come on, Collins. You're better than that. Ooh, the offense shows up, though. Gotta like that. 
Teddy Two Gloves getting the job done. Good D, good D. All right, third down. Let's get off the field. This time we're going to put Robertson Harris inside. Leave Bosa outside. There we go. Three and out. Come on, offense. There you go. Love how the defense is playing right now. Or the offense, rather. Oh my gosh, are you kidding me? Oh, I thought that guy on the sideline was a player. Ugh, gosh, Wentz. I thought he was past the line of scrimmage, so I committed to him. There's no touchdowns. Just playing safe, <laughs> zone coverage, don't want to give up a big play. Oh gosh, oh gosh. Ooh, thank God he spun back inside there. A couple big hits by Sutton Smith today. Whoa, how did he get back in bounds on that? That was nuts. All right, we're gonna use Bosa here. Offsides, are you kidding me? Jeez, what a play. That's BS. Oh, do we block it? Bosa, oh, he got through. Well, the offense is carrying us today. We gotta step up. This run defeat, run defense has been really bad. Ah. Oh, what a hit. God, Wentz is just carving us up, though. We need a turnover. BJ Hill, you're getting a rest. You're not doing enough up front right now. We're going to put Marcus Hunt in there. Jeez. God, we're getting diced up. There we go. There we go. Put all the big guys in for that one. Put Hunt and Robertson Harris on the edge. Jeez, get torched harder, Sam Beal. Wow. Come on, oh. Ugh. This is not on our offense. We are just playing garbage defense. Get it, Smith. Oh! That would have been a game changer. Jeez, are you kidding me? Wow. Mark Ingram. Unreal. This is embarrassing. We knew this defense was going to struggle this year, but this is really bad. Only so much Landon Collins can do to help, too. Gosh, they're catching everything. Huge play here. Oh, are you kidding me? How? How do we not tackle him? Oh, Sutton Smith, you had him in the backfield. That is unacceptable. Rough. Rough gig. <laughs> there we go. Robertson Harris gets in there. He looks like a D end. <laughs> Here 
There you go. Nice hit. Okay, let's get off the field now. We're going to blitz and see if we can get home. Get him down. Whew. Good reaction there, Carter. Ah, the offense is really stalled. Ogletree's come on a little bit. Here you go, Sutton. Oh, there you go, Sutton. He's all over the field. Two pass deflections, four tackles. Good rookie debut. All right, offense, come on now. There you go, there you go. That's what's up. We got life. We just got to get this ball back or maybe get a turnover for us. I was starting to get worried about the offense. That was a big drive. Is that Robertson Harris again? Defense has turned around since he came in. It was. Earning some reps for sure. He's wide open. We are just getting stonewalled in pass protection. I know we're not blitzing much, and we're asking a lot of those guys, but Bosa's been pretty quiet here in his debut. Oh, God, if we could get a fumble. Good play, good play. Oh boy, is this huge right here. Break it up. Oh, he caught it. Come on. Well, this thing's pretty much over. Even if we get a stop, I do not trust our offense. What do they do here? Probably just... Run it, right? There we go. We got him out of field goal range at least. Oh, they're going the field goal route, huh? It's up and no good? Why did they kick that? All right, offense, what do you got? Can you clutch this thing? Nope. <laughs> Looks like Teddy threw an interception. Well, we tried. We played like garbage in the first half. We started to figure some things out as the game went along, but let's see. Teddy Bridgewater, 383 yards, two touchdowns, two interceptions. I'm not really going to put that one on him. Like, that was really just us playing bad defense. Defense. Saquon played well. Odell, he is going to be a beast for us, that is for sure. And then for our defense... Or I kept saying Sutton Smith. It's Cameron Smith. <laughs> Won't screw that up again. Sutton Smith is someone else that I can't think of. And then just the one sack for Robinson Harris was we're going to make him our starting defensive end. And then we'll put Lorenzo Carter in on pass rush downs. But that will do it for episode two, my friends. Looking forward uh, to continuing this series. Hit that like button if you're enjoying. And we'll see you next time. Peace out. Peace out.